Welcome to Rated LGBT Home of the Radio. Stars, through the airwaves and on the big screen. Coming to you live from Hollywood, it's Rated G Radio with your host, Garrett Miller. Well, there we go. There we go. We're live. We're, we're here. We're here. We're here on Rated LGBT Radio, part of Rated G Radio. There's a disclaimer. So and who do we I'm have Ron here? Larkin. I'm Garrett Miller. Wow. <laughs> yeah, the intro left me out. We're we're, we're going to have to fix that. I was like, <laughs> well, I'm I, here I, too. Yeah, Rob's here. Raising my hand in the so, back of the bus. I'm here too. So everybody that is listening for the first time, this is our first episode of Rated LGBT Radio. Rob and I had had such a good time last year having him on monthly as a guest co-host. I said, you know, could I twist your arm, Rob? Would you be a, a, a regular permanent co-host for the show on Thursday nights? And he says, yes, but as long as you don't say, it's super gay radio, because that just drives him nuts. So I said, okay, what are we going to do? So Rob had the brainchild of coming up with a new title. Yeah, because because the community is so much more than just gay. Although we're we're <laughs> we're only the we're on we live in the G part of the community. So. We do live in the G part of the there community, but I I I so, think I just had it in my head to say super gay radio instead of saying rated LGBT radio. Well, that's so, true. The, the, the super gay does sound whoa. super gay. I mean, it's super yeah. cool, you know. Yeah. But um, yeah, and. The acronym thing gets a little wieldy at times. So we're going to have lots of fun. Oh, my gosh. This is going to be like the best. And And every Thursday night this year, you're going to be here leading the charge with me, and we're going to be talking about all things LGBT. So um, you and I had had a chance to talk before the show started tonight. So, uh, I mean, I I don't want to dominate like I usually do. So do you want to kind of tell everybody what's going to be in store tonight and what's, what's happening? Well, tonight, we're going to play it by ear because we have this habit of doing that. We've even devolved, um, dear listeners, at times to, uh, dare I say, talking about the weather. Um, I pulled this back from that clip. <laughs> One of the conversations was like, Garrett, Garrett, we're talking about weather. <laughs> it's like, we we got we to ratchet this up a little bit. But um, tonight... Um, I'm going to share my recent online experience where one of my pieces got pummeled with criticism um, because it went out to an audience that obviously was not terribly LGBT friendly. And I'm going to show why we need to still have a voice because the comments themselves are pretty telling. Um, And then... If Garrett has got the guts, I have my tarot deck sitting in front of me. Oh, my gosh. I, I'm so on board with that. Absolutely. I'd love that. So um, so that's there. That, I'm actually a little bit nervous about that for a couple of reasons. One, it's been a while since I've, I've done it. Two, it's one of those weird things that I do, and I put my heart into it and everything else, and kind of clear my channel and re- say what I see. But I'm also sort of like a, a backyard skeptic of it as well. So I do it, let it through, and when I've done this for people, they seem to have gotten a lot out of it. So it's that's what it is. But um, well, I'm so we've excited. got that in store. You know, because I'm – We've talked about this in the past, and I don't think it's a big secret that after I moved to California as this staunch suit and tie, corporate haircut, very conservative, um, shallow-minded, dim-witted, bleach blonde, whatever I was, that my eyes kind of were open that there, you know, there might be other ways to think out there. There might be other things that are out there that are not easily explainable by, you know, just the average man on the street, one of them being, you know, psychics and then, you know, tarot readers and tea leaf readers and other mediums and then people who think differently and people who, you know, might carry a crystal around or look at a crystal ball or wear essential oils or have magnetic jewelry or drink Kool-Aid. So, Well, the one thing that attracted me to this deck and to 
kind of doing this because it was actually how I got into it was I was dating somebody who kind of did it and he threw the deck at me and said, okay, your turn, you do it. And I was like, what? Huh? It's sort of like <laughs> throwing a car at you going, okay, you drive. And I'm like, what? I, I, don't, I don't even know what this is. It's just play them out and talk about what you see. And so I started doing that and I realized it was a form of tapping into whatever you believe in, in terms of a higher power or God or Jesus or Buddha or, or whoever, um, tapping in and saying, give me inspiration. Just give me some inspiration. And it's a way of focusing that inspiration. And that's how I take it. I I really don't believe, you know, and not to offend any of your previous guests who may have may do this, but I really don't believe in locking people into this is what your future is going to be because I believe people create their futures. You know, they're, they're that may be what, even a path you're on right now, but it doesn't mean it will happen. Well, I think that, you know, at least for the guests that I have on the show, and I always call them the fun guests. Rob, you've always been an outrageously fun guest, so you're in a category all by yourself. But for my fun guests that come on the show that have done tarot or they do psyche re- readings and things like that, I think, because I've also, by the way, I've tested other shows. I've I've called other shows, you know, because I'm always looking for new guests, or I'm just trying to see how it compares to, you know, the guests that we have. And I'm going to tell you, Selfishly and unabashedly, I think we have the best guests, period. Now, that doesn't mean the other show's guests on different programs aren't nice in their own way, but I think we've got the best. So I've called other shows and and had different types of readings and things like that, and I will tell you, they just don't compare to the folks that are on our show. And the one thing that's been consistent across the board, every single person, just like you mentioned, Rob, they will say, this is what I see right now. You always have free will. So you could go out after the show and eat 100 gallons of ice cream, and that does not mean that you're still going to keep your six-pack abs. You're going to get fat. Or you weigh 300 pounds and eat carrot sticks and actually move your butt once in a while. You're going to lose weight. You know, So you, you do have the ability to change whatever. So it's interesting to hear what is you know what these people will see as of right now and and we're going to play that a little bit later i say play that but we're going to do that a little bit later right. and that'll be right. fun to go through so thank you for offering to give me a reading today rob but no problem is you're you're <laughs> i figure i can blow up with you i just like hate yeah. to do that to a listener <laughs> well and you know one of the things that we want to do though is is we want to start doing some fun things not that the show hasn't been fun before it's always been fun but we want to right. do some more right. interactive things with the listeners and Robin said, why don't we do tarot card readings and, you know, we'll have people call in. So one of the things that we're throwing a bunch of things against the wall, we're going to see what kind of sticks. And I will tell you that there are, there's one other LGBT, well, there's a couple other LGBT shows that I really like to listen to as a podcast on a regular basis. So I'm a, I'm a big fan and believing that there's enough podcasts for everybody you're going to either love the show or hate the show. You're going to love the other shows or hate the other shows, and that's okay. But I like to, to give press where we can. Um, one one show that I listen to, I don't really – because you're like a real radio show, Rob, because, you know, you've got a real station <laughs> and all of that. So I, let's start with that's the reality of stuff. You, you host a fantastic show on Saturday night, and you've been doing this for a, quite some time now. It's called Out in Santa Cruz on KSC. Uh, KSCO 1080 AM. I have that memorized. I don't know how. And if you go online to outinsantacruz.com, you can listen to Rob and his uh, co-host every Saturday night at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And they have a much more serious show and they talk about, you know, like real topics, like, you know, real world things. So one of the things that Rob's bringing to this show is the fact that He's actually, you know, he, he's smart, he's educated, he speaks well, and he's bringing a wealth of knowledge and research to a lot of the things that we're going to be talking about. So um, I'm more of the fluff, and Rob's going to be talking about, you know, the substance oh. of the issues, which I really am grateful that you're here for. So we have out. Right, I, 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 I would, I would argue the fluff part because I think you're, while you certainly go into entertaining. Um, some of the things I like about your work is it's very inspiring, and I I think you're both inspirational and spiritual. So, well, your and checks I'll, in the I'll mail. I'll tread in that area. Clear, I promise. Bit. What's that? I said your checks in the mail, and I promise it will clear. <laughs> that would be the first time anybody paid me for anything. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, okay. <laughs> that would be the first. Luck. Okay. 
So we've got yeah, out so. Santa Cruz, which I absolutely love. I also love Scott Fullerton's Left of Straight, which is on Blog Talk Radio. It's also on the UBN Network with Tony Sweet. Um, so that's a show that comes on Tuesday or Monday on the UBN Network at, at 3 p.m. Pacific time. And then Scott does a show on Tuesday. It's a two-hour show from 2 to 4 Pacific Standard Time. And he's got all kinds of topics ranging from food because he's a big foodie to authors and broadway so those are his big things um but my favorite show of, of all time from an lgbt standpoint is recently relaunched this week and it's called Derek and romaine now if you have ever had a serious xm radio and listen to the OutQ channel, Sirius XM OutQ 106, you know, that changes on the dial as you know, frequently as you change your underwear. Uh, but Sirius XM OutQ had Derek and Romaine on the show for 12 years, and they had a fantastic program, very popular. And then this past summer, the people at Sirius decided to take them off the air. No reason, no explanation. They just came into the office one day, and HR was there with somebody else and said, um, your services are no longer needed, so see you later. Goodbye. Obviously, it left everybody who listened to their show on a regular basis devastated, myself included. Well, they've launched their program this week on their own network. It's called DNR 2.0, and you just go to DerekAndRomaine.com, and you can sign up for the service. It's 20 bucks for three months. You think of it as 33 cents every hour that you're getting programming from them, and I'm a huge fan of that. I say all of this. But I'm a little caffeinated. I took a vitamin B12 pill right before the show, so I think it's starting to kick in, Rob, but I apologize. <laughs> but I say all of this because each of these shows that you know are out there, the Out in Santa Cruz, the Left of Straight, the Derek and Romaine shows, they all have different things that I really love about them. And we're trying to find the different things that Rob and I together are going to click with and really enjoy right. doing as listener interactive because historically this show has been a show where the guest calls in like Rob calls in and Rob and I just talk for an hour. We love that and we will have no problem right. filling that hour every week, but we want to really get more involved and engaged with you and have you have the opportunity to lend your voice to the program as well. So one of the things and I'm going to give a shout out to um, game news radio. Um, I'm probably oh, yeah. going to be on it tomorrow too, uh, which is uh, one that, that is really topical, um, uh, Really great uh, little team there that puts it together, and the, uh, sort of like in NPR for gay people. So um, you know, and I think, that's, to them too. I think that's important because you know you you have a lot of things that are out there that are. Well, you know, they could be a little bit more serious. So, again, I think that, that anytime you have anything like that, I think it does the community good. So I'm grateful that they're going to do that. But we're one of the, one of, we're going to do a couple of fun things. We're going to do um, – are you – can I call you a reverend or a pastor or minister? What is your official title? Uh, my official title is reverend, I mean, if you're okay. going there. But, yeah. So <laughs> like, reverend Rob's tarot card reading. So we're going to have that little segment every week. And then we See, also want to. That, that's start our getting... little secret: is you and I both can marry people. You won't because you're going to crack yeah. up in the middle of it. We've already established right. that, but right. but we could. We could. <laughs> well, and and you do. You do actually marry people. And you, how many couples have you married now? I have. I've married three couples so far. Okay, and I, so it seems like it's like lots more than that because I think that you sent me pictures of a couple of the couples that you married for my gay wedding video that we had released this past spring. So I think that in my head, I think that, Rob, you've married like 85 people or something like that. Well, you and I did a show with uh, a couple of friends of ours who had married married a few, and, and um, we went from you who could in theory marry somebody but who hasn't. I married three people. The first guest married, I think he said like 60 or whatever. I was going, oh, my, that's that's really great. And then we brought on uh, Marion Ross and, Oh, Mar oh yeah, that's right. Thousand. <laughs> I'm going. Okay, we are humbled. <laughs> yeah, we're um, yeah, Well, she does a great job too. She's awesome. Yeah, terrific, terrific lady. Yeah, definitely. So, the, so yeah, Reverend Rob. One other, the, Reverend Rob is going to do tarot card reading weekly. So, if you would like to get a tarot card reading, well, if you even want to do it tonight, right? But you know, let him practice on me for a week. So, let, you know, if you want to call in, we'll take your call three two three six five seven fourteen ninety three. That is the hotline. We are live for the next hour. But let him practice this week. Get your you know get your ideas in 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 your head on what you might like to hear or go through, and then get ready for next week, and we'll do a whole segment on that. But we're also going to be doing a 
kind of like, I'm going to call it the love doctor, but it can really be for just about any topic that you want. We're going to start taking your calls, and if you've got questions about life or just need advice or somebody to talk to on a Thursday night, wherever you're at, we're going to take your calls and see what what good advice we can offer to you. It might be a little of That's you know right. good cop, bad cop, but we're going to do our best we, to. We may have absolutely no credibility on whatever Zero. you're asking of us, but we will offer an opinion anyway, guaranteed. Yes. Guaranteed. There you go. So That's, we're going to do that. Yeah. Well, Rob, let's, something. let's talk about some of your work. And, and for those who are listening to Rated LGBT Radio for the first time ever, number one, welcome to the show. But we are really lucky to have you here, Rob. You are uh, – do you want me to give you mad props or can you list, you know, like uh, – uh, Hey, I, I, I need it. I can use it. <laughs> okay. So here's the deal, folks. Rob – not only is a successful radio host on his own, but he is a gay dad. He's got two kids who are growing up faster than a, a bean sprout, and he they're active. And you know, Rob does all the dad stuff with them. He's got two aging parents, and of course, as we get to be a certain age, that's always an interesting dilemma that I think a lot of us have to deal with. That may or may not be a comfortable subject. He is a successful. Um, author. He writes a regular blog. He's written what's called vlogs, I guess video logs. Oftentimes his articles are picked up nationally on the Huffington Post and then picked up on other wire services like Yahoo News. He's been on the on the front page of Yahoo more times than I can shake a stick at. And every time it's like, that looks like one of Rob's articles. And I click on the link and it's one of Rob's articles. And so I take a screenshot and say, Rob, have you seen this? He goes, yeah, I know. I got another one on Yahoo again. <laughs> you know, it's just like, again. But this is the this is the type of, um, you know, background and credentials that Rob comes from. He's, he's, he's like the real deal, folks. And so having him here is really very special. And one of his special, well, the other special thing about Rob is that he actually does a series that it's called A Letter from a Gay Dad, or, and, and he will write to, you know, the du jour offender of the week from Kim Davis down in Kentucky to, you know, you name it. And Rob's going to share one of the articles that he's recently written and gotten horrific feedback. And I love it anytime somebody you know, gives feedback, whether it's good or bad, but when it's bad, it's even better because then we're going to talk about them. So Rob, what right. is the article that raised everybody's hair this week? Or it's, it's, it's been well, recent, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, ironically. Yeah. It was, it was just this week um, it, on Yahoo parents. Um, in fact, if you go out there and Google Rob Watson, I'm sure it'll come up. Um, I'm doing that right now. But It was way. an article. Yeah. It was a, a no test me. <laughs> Um, it was an article in which I was just simply writing about why I do write as a gay dad and not just as a dad. Because a lot of people, when um, same-sex marriage became legal, wanted to that that was the veil. They wanted to just you know we're going to pass right through, and you know it, it no longer matters whether you're LGBT or not. Here we are, we're folded into the the group, and you know. Don't call it gay marriage anymore. It's now marriage. Don't call it gay dad anymore. You're just a dad. You know, that's the way things should be. And there is some point to that. However, there still is such a large faction of our society who are not just against gay people or not friendly. I mean, they are horrifically cruel and mean. And so I write as a gay dad to kind of get in their face a little bit. But also just, you know, it's I want the the uniqueness of what a gay dad is to be visible. Um, the men that I know who are gay dads are all, to a person, outstanding parents. They're, they're, they're I mean, I, I don't know how to, to say it more. I mean, so many of them have chosen foster care as the route to parent and have helped kids that would not have a great life otherwise to have fantastic, secure, self-confident, um, nurtured, wonderful lives. And um, so I write in honor of them. I write also because those of us who are gay dads have gone through a heck of a lot to get here. Um, we didn't just 
fall into this. It wasn't an accident. Many of us didn't think we ever would be. Um, it took planning. It took intention. It took research, and and you know, we we stepped up consciously to do this. And many of us, having been through the loss of the AIDS crisis and a lot of things like that, we have a different life experience that we bring to this. So all of those were were in my essay on why I write as a gay dad. So um, here are a few of the lovely comments. Let me pull this up so I can actually read these. Um, That um, I got from the readers on Yahoo. Um, This is from Russell. Uh, We all know the real reason you continue to call yourself a, quote, gay, unquote, dad, is that you're keeping all your options open, very selfishly, of course. Uh, I'm not quite sure what that comment means, but... I don't think it's good. How, whatever, how are you were trying to say? I don't think it was good. <laughs> I don't think it's good either. But what options are you keeping open? I'm not sure. <laughs> it's not. You know, it's sort of like okay, if I'm a dad, then I'm committed to being straight. I I, I didn't get it. So anyway, okay. uh, his his goes into the you know okay you're that that was just kind of idiotic. Um, another person named Rob ironically says, "How about Nambla, Daddy?" So that uh, you can detect where the direction of a lot of these are are going in. Um, uh, then no lie commented. God doesn't condone it, and that's how the gays whine for rights. So I'm not sure what it is that God doesn't condone, because um, I'm pretty sure God condones loving and parenting and you know nurturing and all that stuff. Um, and I'm not sure how I was whining for rights, but whatever. It was, okay. Yeah, that That's there. Um, oh, this one's lovely. Love Stefan, and um, you can tell where this is going to go. And this is one of the things that's going to be nice about being on rated LGBT radio rather than the FCC-controlled radio. So um, anyway. You can swear. Love Stefan kindly says, no one cares who you shove your penis into except you. Um, get a real talent. Writing isn't working for you. So somehow, <laughs> it's hard to dissect that one. I mean, it's like uh, okay, nothing in the article is about where my you know penis goes, um, or or into whom. Um, this is one of the things. It's like you say gay, and there are so many people who instantly go to like gay sex, whereas you know, heterosexual people present all the time, and you know nobody. Nobody ever says anything does, about does you know. Yeah. You're putting your this into that, and yeah, you know. It's, oh my God! I mean, because yeah, so I'd like if, to announce my engagement. Oh, we don't care that you're putting your dick in Sally. It's like right, okay. it's, and <laughs> and, and imagine how that would. I mean, that's a great point, though. Imagine how that would play every time says, oh, I'm getting engaged, you know, to your and your friends on Facebook, you know, we're getting engaged. And you go, I don't care where you're putting your penis into Sally. You know, you know how dumb we would look by saying that? Oh, yeah, as none of these guys are. I mean, the funny thing is, is it's not like it was an article about a love interest. It was right. an article about, you know, uh, the experience of being a gay person and um, and parenting. Um Oh, now here's Scott. He's very magna- magnanimous. Who am I to judge? But God will, because apparently God talks to Scott. Um, oh. God refers to homosexuality as vile, unnatural, and an abomination, which um, I'm not sure where Scott got that. Well, that's <laughs> because I don't think Scott that has quote the hotline is... line because God's talking to Scott. Well, I, I guess. So he, he must that have must referred be. to Scott and said vile, unnatural, an abomination. Yeah. Wow. Um, so anyway, I hope He's not God heard him clearly. In the Bible. Well, no, abomination is in there, but it's a it's a translation of of uh, um, a word that means ritually unclean. So um, uh, anyway, <laughs> so so why allow yourself to participate in such a perverted lifestyle or support another person in it? Just asking. So um, perverted lifestyle. The lifestyle I have is 
getting my kids up in the morning, make sure they're they're showered, fed breakfast, make their lunch, get them to school with the other kids, um, so they're in that lifestyle, come home, do homework, um, and get to bed by 8.30. Um, and, of course, feed them dinner in there. So um, why do I let them participate in such a perverted lifestyle? Um, seems pretty Ozzy and Harriet to me. but uh, Or is it, maybe it's a little closer to my three sons than Ozzy and Harriet. But, there you uh, go. <laughs> anyway, I know. Um, or support another person in it. Yeah, no, it's a great show. You know, it's like, and I read these comments, and, you know, that show is actually a prototype for gay dads. So there you had a single dad, right. and, you know, he had Uncle Charlie who did all the cooking, yeah. so uh-huh. Uh-huh. two dads raising three guy, three boys. And strangely enough, you know, even in the conservative time that came out, nobody was calling them perverts and, you know, all that stuff that, you know, anyway. We we get it. Um, oh, this is this is one of my favorites from a lovely couple, Brenda and John. Um, I hope you're ready for this one. Okay. As history has taught us, he will probably molest his son. He will say he can't help it, but he can. He is a pedophile. <laughs> well, and and we, we, can have whole, we, we need to do a show on that and get some experts on here because statistics will show overwhelmingly the majority of pedophiles are straight heterosexual men or quote-unquote right. heterosexual men. And it is, and, I mean, it, overwhelmingly that is what is out there. But it's, it, it is shocking when you hear people like that saying, oh, well, he's just going to sexually abuse his kids. It's like that is so statistically not right. going to take statistically, place. Statistically, yeah, statistically, uh, I'll let you, we'll play, how close can you get to the number? What percentage number of all pedophiles statistically are out gay men? Um, I would say how? like maybe 5% maybe. You are four percent off. It is one percent. Okay. Gay men, out, out gay men who are, have been convicted or or found to be pedophiles, are less of a percentage than straight women. Holy cow! So yeah, you're right. Is you know it, when it's studied the the lifestyle and everything that most pedophiles present is that of a straight man. You're right. In that lifestyle, marry with kids, you know, the whole bit. So, yeah, no, not fitting the profile, Brendan and John, sorry. Um, now, this one was a little more broad. Gays need the gay identity thing. It is their reason for existing, which is like, okay, not, not really. <laughs> um, um, their display of gayness is important to them. It, they must not only be tolerated, they must be celebrated, but for the life of me and millions of others, we just don't understand why we must be forced to celebrate something we find abhorrent and disgusting. So, Smitty, no offense, but whatever sex you have, I probably find it is equally disgusting. Just putting it out there, that's the way it is. And speaking on behalf of all gay people, for myself, um, we've had to put up with it for a long, long time. So, you know, suck it up, buttercup. You get a little bit of us. Well, and and again, you know, we can take a look at any TV show, any movie, any book, any magazine, any any whatever, and it is not that it's been thrown in our face. It's just then that's been how it is. You know, you have the straight couples, and you know, but it, we could go back forty, fifty years. We, let's go back fifty years. You know, we would not have an interracial couple, and it doesn't have to be black or white. It could be black and white, black and Asian, Asian black. Um, you know, uh, any you know, purple and green. It doesn't matter. But you, you know, fifty years ago, you would not ever think about having a biracial couple on television, or a biracial couple in a movie, or a biracial couple. On a on a print ad, you know, or a card, you know, to sell a, a Ford or a Chevy, that just would not have taken place. And you know, today, I you know, I don't know the community in, where you live, but I think it, you're fairly progressive there. But to think that you wouldn't have interracial couples, or you know, just 
you know other other races living in your community just is so silly because it's you know we're not living in 1950s leave it to beaver or the Ozzy and Harriet show this is this is not well, yeah. that it's just silly our, our our president is the product of a biracial couple right and, and and you know it's like so many people we we just take it for granted and i do remember i mean really dating myself here when you know, in the 60s, that all was coming down, and people were as ridiculous as these people were about it. You know, it was like, you know, oh, that's so terrible, and oh, you know, children are going to be polka dotted, and you know, it's like, what? You know, it was just, you know, it was it was insane, and this is equally insane. So, anyway, just to let you know, not everybody loves me, so <laughs> just okay, putting so that right you- out there. I, you have your six detractors. Now those six detractors have gone on to, you know, harass somebody else. But, you know, I, again, I, I welcome anybody. If if you don't like me and if you don't like the show or whatever, I, I actually love hearing from you more because you tell me so much about what I can either improve upon because if you don't like it and I think you're a snake, I'm going to do a lot more of whatever it is you don't like because obviously I'm hitting a nerve. But, you know, I, it, this is a great time to bring up the fact that we've got a 10-question anonymous survey on your listening experience tonight and it's really geared to tailor the show more along the lines of things that you'd like to hear and see from a guest standpoint to topics and all that kind of fun stuff unless you tell me this is Maureen and Madison I will never know who you are or what city you're from or anything about you other than it's just you know tell me you know are you a man or a woman are you in this age bracket are you what region of the country do you live in how often do you listen to the show and things like that and then it does give you a free form place to you know give us your opinions and insights so if you take that survey again Rob and I will be forever in your debt for doing that and we would love to hear from you good or bad because we're here yeah. to do a fun Although- show that you like Good or bad, although ideas and things that you would like to hear much better will really warm our hearts because that will actually give us ideas of things we can do for you. If if you just hate us, well, okay. Well, we, we appreciate yeah. hearing that. But, yeah, yeah. Okay. thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. And the tenth <laughs> one gets a free coffee cup, you know. So let's do this. Let's take a quick commercial break. We're going to hear from our friends of Rainbow Brew out of Minneapolis, St. Paul. We love them. And we're going to come back, and there's more rated LGBT radio with Rob Watson. I've also got a surprise for everybody in just a second. When it comes to coffee, freshness is queen. That's why Rainbow Brew believes you should have the freshest coffee, roasted to order in small batches and delivered to your door within a couple days. Whether you're purchasing for a coffee shop, restaurant, or home, Rainbow Brew is your one-stop shop for fair trade and organic coffee. Offering many unique blends, including AM 950's own Blue State blend. That's Rainbow Brew, the queen bean, a proud sponsor of the morning grind. Online at rainbowbrew.com. Brew something good today. Thank you, Rainbow Brew. Rob, are you ready for a big surprise that even you have don't even know about yet? I don't even know. I'm all ready. I'm all ears. And I'm telling you this now because I'm I'm putting you on the spot because I'm going to need some help. Right before the show, you know, because we've got Rated G Radio. That's great. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. Rated LGBT Radio needs its own website. And I just secured the domain, ratedlgbtradio.com, two minutes before the show started. So one of the things that I'm going to work on with Rob is notice how I'm involving you already. I'm going to be creating a... Uh, website that Rob is going to help me with and we're going to be doing a lot of um, we'll have like a bio of Rob we'll have his glamour shot picture there we'll have uh, places for people to chat we'll post Rob's articles we'll talk about the things that we're going to talk about on the show and we're going to have some things that we're going to be able to offer to you as listeners that will be new and exciting in the course of the year so um, Rob guess what we're going to have a new website I am so excited. I, I think that's fantastic. Yeah. So that there we go. Very good. Yeah. Well, I got to thinking, you know, I've, I've got, I, I'm a big domain whore, so I'll always go and buy all the domains and, and go through all of that. And I said, I am really slacking here because Rob and I have talked about doing this show and I haven't even gotten a domain for it yet. And so I raced over to GoDaddy and I logged into my account and said, okay, I need to see if this is available. And it was. And so I grabbed it. So we've got it for at least two years 
And then, you know, when somebody wants to pay us, you know, an obscene amount of money to do something with it, then, you know, I'll, we'll entertain that. But for the time being, um, we'll have email addresses that you can email us at. It's not set up tonight because, again, I did this a half an hour ago. But we'll have an email that, like Rob at rated LGBTradio.com, Garrett at, you know, LGBTradio.com and um, stuff like that. So if you want to interact with us, we're going to give you easy ways to connect with the show and connect with us so we can be closer to the community. So that's kind of fun. Fantastic! I that that will be very exciting. My my mind is already working. I I I knew it would be because you are awesome at that type of stuff. So, we'll we'll powwow in the next few days and we'll figure out where we're gonna start taking this. But we want to make it um, you know super fun and interactive for everybody. And just again, we want we want you to think of the show as this fantastic show that comes to you once a week, but also a place where you can go for resources and information. And it's not just one. Uh, it's not just one hour of fun banter between a couple of guys that it really enjoy each other's you know company on air. We want to be able to bring things to you that are, are important and matter, and that uh, this can start to be a resource for you as you you know start looking at life. You know, like you go to Facebook and log in you know four thousand times a day, you'll be able to log into rated G- LGBT radio and do the same thing. I'm going to call Ron Mark Zuckerberg from now on. <laughs> no, don't do that. Okay. <laughs> Unless okay. I get a signing authority. If I if I can sign some checks for him, then go for it. Okay, that's fine. I'll, yeah, because then you'll be signing some checks over to me. So, yes. Thank you, Mark Zuckerberg. Appreciate that very much. Right. More than okay. merrier. Wasn't there rumors he was giving away billions of dollars or something like that? I, I didn't pick up on Are that. Are we going to – okay. So if we're going to talk about this for a second, lemmings keep jumping off the cliff. You damn fools. Let me tell you, you know, every time 50, 50 Cent was doing this, you know, somebody purporting to be Mark Zuckerberg was doing this. And then the, the idiots at Good Morning America did something. I think they just mentioned the fact that this is, you know, something that was going on. And everybody out there was like, I heard it on Good Morning America. And I said, you could have heard it on Fox News. It doesn't make it any less true. And everybody just went nuts over it. And it's just like people... Come on. Come on. Yeah, if it sounds too good to be true, it is. It is. Yeah. yeah. Well, Robert, anyway. we've got about 22 minutes left in the show, and I, and at some point before the end of the program, I'd love to play Gay Wedding just because it's our gay show today. Do we have our LGBT show? Do we? Should we jump into doing the um, the tarot card reading? I have. That's, that's, I'm, uh, I've got them in my hot little hands here. So. Okay. Um, so how does this work? What are we going to do here? Okay, so because normally if you were sitting in front of me, um, uh, we would be, I'd be having you handle the cards and kind of pulling out ones that you instinctively felt were right for you, Uh, since we're a little far apart to do that. What I'm going to do is I am shuffling them here, and I want you just to kind of focus on that for a second, and when you feel right, say now. Now. Okay, great. So now I want you. I'm going to do a modified reading of what I normally do, because the the normal ones take like an hour of themselves. Um, so I'm only going to focus on four things for your reading. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to have an archetype image for you. That's the archetype is sort of like if we were doing horoscope, it'd be like your sign. That kind of generous, okay. all-encompassing thing of you. Um, so give me a number, whatever number you feel like. Um, ten. Okay, good. I'm glad, glad it was another one because we'd be here counting for a long time. Uh, okay, you picked your archetype card. Now, um, the next card is um, the emotional card that is overlaying your archetype card. So um, that one, I want you to give me another number. Seven. Okay. Should I've okay. should have said eight or do we is seven okay? No no no, no, no I'm, I'm <laughs> sorry it's, it's like I'm already seeing the images here and um, they're uh, it's uh, it's pretty interesting. 
Okay, this next card is mental, where you are mentally. So give me another number. Eleven. Eleven. Okay, and um, now this last one is physical, where you are physically. So in one more number. Four. Well, that's pretty interesting. The one I had my hand on. Okay, so um, this is, what I see in front of me actually is pretty surprising to me. Um, uh, and maybe Maybe it shouldn't be. Um, and the archetype card that is kind of the core of you is actually fear, the fear card. And it's um, an image of sort of feeling a little bit underwater. Um, there's a lot of tentacles growing out, um, a little bit of feeling of chaos and um this very oceanic kind of imagery of energy of life, you know, turning around in in sort of a, a, a bit of a chaotic state, but um, definitely a little bit of a frantic, frantic um, state of being. Uh, interestingly enough, card that you picked for your emotional state that lies over this and covers that is the card of the Ten of Wands, which is spirituality and growth. And in the middle of that card is a baby's hand and this lovely opening flower that is becoming, being able to emerge. And beneath it is an old hand that is withering away, while the young hand, the new baby hand, is reaching and almost in the, the state of grabbing the flower and all of this is being done under the um, realm of redwoods that are, are, are just shooting up out of this. So the, the fear that is kind of core is being covered by this incredible sense of emotional growth and life. That then dovetails into your mental card, which is a huge contrast to what is kind of going on in a little more deep level. Your mental card is the sun, which is this incredible brightness and richness and orange, um, a monarch butterfly fully formed out of the cocoon as is flying across it. Um, there's a, an Egyptian king's glowing gold face glowing out um, there's a fish which kind of ties in to your original card that is floating on the bottom, except that in, in this, in the mental state, the fish is not in the ocean. He's, he's, he's swimming across a field of flowers and um, thriving. And just, you know, it's, it is all brilliant. And, you know, at the very top corner is the universe and sort of like the, the branching out with this brilliance reaching out towards something of universal significance. And then your physical card is very similar, very growth-oriented, sunny, bright, brimming, um, and the, the, the card itself is the commencement card. And it is the four of, of worlds, which is very physical, um, you know, starting your your immersion into who you will become. And um, again, very much sun and planetary imagery there, um, kind of really breaking through to something pretty magnificent. So that is your reading. That's very cool. Now, from the reading that you've just given me, based on what you know about me, because again, you're reading the cards. You're not saying, "Oh, I know," I, you know, "This is Garrett." So Garrett, da da da. So what, how do you think the cards st stack up against what your perception of me is already? 
Uh, actually, the the one that was shocking to me was the first one because it was it was almost like um, because I don't see you as a fearful person, but um, it's like when it laid out with everything else and seeing that as you know a bit of the the core of where a lot of your growth has come out of and what your your um, it, it kind of made sense in that context. You know, how do you feel about it? Was that you? you I thought to that I thought that was because everything that you were going through. I was like, okay, I can see that. That would make sense. That would make sense. And and especially from you know the first card because a lot of the things that I've gone through in life have have been you know I've grown because of fear you know and that unfortunately is is. You know, right, wrong, or indifferent. That's just been it, the way it's been, and it, it, I will also say that I, that's also been something I, I continue to try to work on, so I can grow from enjoyment and not out of you know getting hit over the head with a hammer all the time. So, right. you know, that's something that is something I continue to work on. But very interesting to hear you pull those cards. Well, uh, it, I mean, it was from your your direction, so the yeah, but yeah, it's um, it's um. See, a lot of what I really like doing is doing this when I don't know the person at all, because then I have no, no yep. contact. Yep. And um, I, you know, this because I do know you, it, it resonates in certain things. I would have read it the same way even I, if I hadn't. But you know, the the first one was kind of like, okay, maybe I should, maybe I should call this whole thing off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you know, it, yeah, it's it's it, it reminded me of one time. Um, when you had the launch party for um, Gay Wedding and there were a bunch of pictures of you and I remarked to you later that, you know, you look great, you look fabulous as, you know, blonde Jesus and everything else. But in the pictures, when I looked in your eyes, your eyes looked so anxious, yeah. you know, and uncomfortable. And time. it's like, yeah, and that's what I, I when I saw this reading that, Reminded me of that, you know that yeah. of that, you know it's like if uh, it, it, it's, I mean not to get it super personal, but I think it's something that people don't allow for you to have that going on, you know because you're everything you put out is so sunny and bright and fun and you know inspiring and it's like okay, but give him some space to have his own fears that he's working through well you know it's funny because you know we take a look at, at you know who we are and you know i know i put my pants on one leg at a time i i'm just me okay i put an album out last year did a couple of music videos we do this show so some people get really impressed by that and i will tell you trust me I, number one, thank you, but you know, trust me, the reality is it is what it is. Um, but you forget that you know all these people that you meet. You know, and I go to, I don't want to say a lot, but I get invited to events up in Hollywood often, and I get to meet a lot of people who you might call celebrities. That you, they might be more D-list people or whatever, but you know, they're people that you will recognize or know, and they have. It's amazing, you know. They have the same insecurities. They have to pay rent every month. They're trying to get their next gig so they can, you know, put their kids through school or you know whatever is going on. And you know, you take a look at, you know, their image that's out on Entertainment Tonight or in the movie or the the gossip magazines or whatever the case is. And even if they are putting out this fantastically, you know, fantastic front, you know, they still have worry and doubt and things that are going on in their worlds, even if they have great people behind them, you know, they, they're still people. And I think that we tend right. to forget that that's the case. So, you know, it's interesting. I posted something last week on Facebook and, and somebody in the, in the United Kingdom wrote to me today and they said, are you okay? I was really worried after your post last week. And I said, which post what? And I went, Oh, it was, it was the post. I wrote something about the fact that, you know, my life is, you know, changing behind the scenes and that I'm really kind of excited about the opportunities that are going to be taking place because my life is changing. And a lot of people wrote me last week and including the gentleman that wrote me today. And he says, you know, I, I'm just really worried about you. And I said, I was looking at it as like, I'm really excited that all of that stuff took place because now it's going to let me go and do all of these other things that I'm really excited about doing. 
Um, but I was surprised at how many people said, you know, oh, hang in there, we're pulling for you. And I was like, oh, I didn't say it right, or I, I'm not communicating it the right way, because that was not what I was trying to well, do at all. I, yeah, no, I, I, I think that's true, although it's, and, and that's what I'm seeing in the, that reading, the you know, the brightness and everything that, that is going on with you emotionally and mentally, you know, and physically, you know, that are on top of that are brilliant. I mean, they weren't just positive. They were like, whoa. I mean, I wish you could see the colors. That was probably, probably one of the fallacies of doing this on radio. <laughs> it's like, oh, look at this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Isn't that cool? Wow. Um, but it was like, it was like just, you know, like, put on shades brilliant. I mean it was was that bright. And, you know, it's 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 okay to, you know, approach change with a little bit of fear, but it's you know, you carry it through. And I I would differ on your own self assessment though that, you know, the things you do are, are kind of no big deal because they are a big deal. They're they're a big deal not only in the fact that people love them and get very excited about the work you put out but they're a big deal that you did them in the first place. You know, it's like most people, most people listening to us right now would not have gone out and bought a website tonight and would not have done a radio show and constructed it themselves and would not have, you know, done a music video. I mean, as much as they might have fantasized about doing it, they would not have just done it. And you have, you've stepped out and, and, that is incredibly inspiring for a lot of us who are watching okay. you. Well, I just got goosebumps when you said that, so I'm going to have to give you that, and I will say thank you very much. No problem. I'm I'm all on a roll. That's when <laughs> when 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 I do the tarot cards, it's like something comes through me, and all of a sudden I'm you know. So anyway. Right on. So if, if for go. anybody listening, let me go back to the you... the emails calling me a pedophile. Let's let's okay, let's, let's do, go back there. Let's go back. Okay. I was kidding. Let's not. Oh, Let's good. I was not. like, okay, I'm so done with that one. But okay, I, you know. Yeah. The, 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 no. Rob is up in Northern California. I'm down in Southern California. We we aren't looking at each other to kind of get facial, you know, cues from each other, you know, where we're going. So this is all, that's the beauty of live radio, folks. But So as, as you just heard, Rob gave me a fantastic uh, tarot card reading. If you would like to get a tarot card reading next Thursday from Reverend Rob, we're going to open that up. I'm actually going to put the show into the um, spirituality category next week to open up the lines to more people. Tonight's show is broadcast in the LGBT category. We will um, we'll archive it there, but we, when we have Rob doing his tarot card readings, we'll open up into the spirituality and um, see – where that takes us. I think that will be interesting because that will put us in the category that we do with our other quote-unquote fun guests. So if you'd like to do that next week, and if you want to line up a little bit early, do that. And you can either call in at 323-657-1493 and do that. Or if we're on Facebook or something, we'll see how we can interact with you at, uh, there as well. Rob, we got a couple minutes left before I'm going to end the show with that wonderful song, Gay Wedding. Do you have exciting plans in store for the weekend? What's going on for the rest of your world? Well, on out in Santa Cruz, we have some really special guests coming on, and they are three different leaders who have started GSAs in schools. And we're going to be talking about um, LGBT teens, the challenges they face in school, how schools that don't have GSAs might want to start one, and what the benefits to that are. So I'm really excited about that because it it really is core to a lot of the things I do is, you know, I'm really about protecting the young people who are coming out and allowing them to find themselves safely and with confidence and self-worth. So this is very much in line with that. So I'm very excited about that. That'll be a good show. And that's, again, Saturday at 7 o'clock Pacific time on outinsantacruz.com if you're looking for that show online. Now, where where do people find your, uh, quote-unquote, regular work? Because you have a great website that you have and you write for a bunch of folks. Where can people go to find some of your writing this week? You, you can find all of my writing on Evol Equals. It's E-V-O-L-E-Q-U-A-L-S dot com and they're all there in chronological order. Um the Facebook book page, Facebook dot com slash evolve equals as well. 
um, that's a 25,000 member community that uh, we, my blog stuff all appears there as well as other stuff that is thematic to that cause. I'm on Twitter at J and J Dad. Um, although I like your Twitter handle better, it's Garrett's Hot. At Garrett's Hot. <laughs> we're, we're, There's confidence you know, for you. I tell you, when you sat you down to pick out your your Twitter name, <laughs> you were feeling good that day. <laughs> I was I was kind of being snarky because Garrett Miller was taken, um, and I couldn't do Garrett, and I didn't want to do Garrett like 2010 because you know at the end of 2010 that would be passe. So I was like, okay, and I was just being a smartass. So now anytime I can't get my name as a, a do, as a domain or something, I always pick Garrett's Hot because I, but it could be Garrett Shot. So I don't know. You know, it's, it depends upon no, the day. No, no, it's Garrett's Hot. Well, actually, if you saw the tarot cards, like you should keep going back to that. But that's what that card. That mental card was hot. It was hot. hot, hot, hot. Orange, sun, gold. It was like just bursting at the seams. So, yeah, Garrett's hot is accurate. There we go. Everybody, it's Mr. Rob Watson. I'm Garrett Miller, and we are going to see you next Thursday night on Rated LGBT Radio. Tomorrow on the Friday Night Dance Party, we've got musician Brad Schechter. He's got a brand new album out. We're going to be playing that in hour number one, talking to the man behind the music. And in hour number two, we'll be taking your request. That's, of course, live at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. In the meantime, here's a flavor of my song called Gay Wedding. You'll know this from the 1982 classic Billy I. Idol White Wedding. Billy Idol's team did sign off and give me the permission to use this as my lead single from my album Blonde Jesus. Go buy the album on my website. I say put some money in Papa's you know, wallet because he needs a new pair of shoes and he's trying to feed the puppies. So here's some gay wedding. We'll see you live on Friday.
been listening to Rated G Radio.